ओम भूर भूव स्वतुर्वरेण्यम भर्गो दीम धियो यो न प्रचोदया ओं शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स आई एम स्टार्टिंग वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वीडियोस ऑन ए वेरी होली बुक ऑफ भगवान श्री रामाकृष्णा परमहंसा द गोस्पल ऑफ रामाकृष्ण परमहंसा आई स्टार्ट द फर्स्ट वीडियो विथ चैप्टर नंबर वन मास्टर एंड डिसाइपल फेब्रवरी एटीन हंड्रेड एटी टू and the first visit to the master and is the disciple who wrote gospel of ramakrishna paramahansa he noted the divine sermons given by bhagwan shri Rama Krishna Paramahansa So I start and the first visit to the master it was on a sunday in spring a few days after sri rama krishna's birthday that am met him the first time sri rama krishna lived at the kalibari the temple garden of mother kali on the bank of the ganges at dakshineswar and being at leisure on sundays had gone with his friend siddho to visit several gardens at bara nagar as they were walking in prasanna banerjee's garden siddho said there is a charming place on the bank of the ganges where a paramhansa lives should you like to go there and assented and they started immediately for the dakshineswar temple garden they arrived at the main gate at dusk and went straight to sri rama krishna's room and there they found him seated on a wooden couch facing the east with a smile on his face he was talking of god the room was full of people all seated on the floor drinking in his words in deep silence and stood there speechless and looked on it was as if he were standing where all the holy places met and as if sukhdeva himself were speaking the word of god or as if sri chaitanya were singing the name and glories of the lord in puri vid ramananda swarup and other devotees formalities and essentials of religion sri rama krishna said when hearing the name of hari or rama once you shed tears and your hair stands on end then you may know for certain that you do not have to perform such devotions as the sandha any more then only 
will you have a right to renounce rituals or rather rituals will drop away of themselves <clears throat> then it will be enough if you repeat only the name of rama or hari or even simply om continuing he said the sandhya merges in the gayatri and the gayatri merges in om and looked around him with wonder and said to himself what a beautiful place what a charming man how beautiful his words are i have no wish to move from this spot after a few minutes he thought let me see the place first then i will come back here and sit down as he left the room with siddho he heard the sweet music of the evening service arising in the temple from gong bell drum and cymbal he could hear music from the nahabat too at the south end of the garden the sounds traveled over the ganges floating away and losing themselves in the distance a soft spring wind was blowing laden with the fragrance of flowers the moon had just appeared it was as if nature and man together were preparing for the evening worship am and siddho visited the 12 shiva temples the radha kanta temple and the temple of bhavatarini and as am watched the services before the images he his heart was filled with joy <clears throat> on the way back to sri rama krishna's room the two friends talked siddhu told and that the temple garden had been founded by rani rasmani he said that god was worshiped there daily as kali krishna and shiva and that within the gates sadhus and beggars were fed when they reached sri rama krishna's door again they found it shut and brinde the maid standing outside and who had been trained in english manners and would not enter a room without permission asked her is the holy man in brinde replied yes he is in the room and how long has he lived here brinde oh he has been here a long time and does he read many books brinde books oh dear no they are all on his tongue and had just finished his studies in college it amazed him to hear that sri rama krishna read no books and perhaps it is time for his evening worship may we go into the room will you tell him we are anxious to see him brinde go right in children go in and sit down entering the room they found sri rama krishna alone seated on the wooden couch incense had just been burnt and all the doors were shut as he entered and with folded hands saluted the master then at then at the master's bidding he and siddhu sat on the floor sri rama krishna asked them where do you live what is your occupation why have you come to baranagar 
and answer the questions but he noticed that now and then the master seemed to become absent minded later he learned that this mood is called bhava ecstasy it is like the state of the angler who has been sitting with his rod the fish comes and swallows the bait and the float begins to tremble the angler is on the alert he grips the rod and he grips the rod and watches the float steadily and eagerly he will not speak to anyone such was the state of sri rama krishna's mind later am heard and himself noticed that sri rama krishna would often go into this mood after dusk sometimes becoming totally unconscious of the outer world and perhaps you want to perform your evening worship in that case may we take our leave sri rama krishna still in ecstasy no evening worship no it is not exactly that after a little conversation and saluted the master and took his leave come again sri rama krishna said on his way home began to wonder who is this serene looking man who is drawing me back to him is it possible for a man to be great without being a scholar how wonderful it is i should like to see him again he himself said come again i shall go tomorrow or the day after second visit and the second visit to sri rama krishna took place on the south east veranda at 8 o'clock in the morning the master was about to be shaved the barber having just arrived as the cold season still lingered he had put on a mole skin shawl bordered with red seeing am the master said so you have come that's good sit down here he was smiling he stammered a little when he spoke sri rama krishna to am am here means master mahase where do you live am in calcutta sir sri rama krishna where are you staying here am i am at bada nagar at my older sister's isan kaviraj's house sri rama krishna oh at isan's well how is kesav now he was very ill and indeed i have heard so too but i believe he is well now master's love for kesav sri rama krishna i made a vow to worship the mother with green coconut and sugar on kesav's recovery sometimes in the early hours of the morning i would wake up and cry before her mother please make kesav well again if kesav doesn't live whom shall i talk with when i go to calcutta and so it was that i resolved to offer her the green coconut and sugar tell me do you know of a certain mr cook who has come to calcutta is it true that he is giving lectures once kesav took me on a steamer and this mr cook to was in the party and yes sir i have heard something like that 
but I have never been to his lectures. I don't know much about him. Sri Rama Krishna on Anne's marriage. Sri Rama Krishna, Pratap's brother, came here. He stayed a few days. He had nothing to do and said he wanted to live here. I came to know that he had left his wife and children with his father-in-law. He has a whole brood of them. So I took him to task. Just fancy, he is the father of so many children. Will people from the neighborhood feed them and bring them up? He is not even ashamed that someone else is feeding his wife and children and that they have been left at his father-in-law's house. I scolded him very hard and asked him to look for a job. Then he was willing to leave here. Are you married? And yes, sir. Sri Ramakrishna with a shudder. Oh, Ramlal, alas, he is married. Like one guilty of a terrible offense, and sat motionless, his eyes fixed on the ground. He thought, is it such a wicked thing to get married? The master continued, have you any children? And this time could hear the beating of his own heart. He whispered in a trembling voice, yes, sir, I have children. Very sadly, Sri Rama Krishna said, Oh me, he even has children. Thus rebuked and sat speechless. His pride had received a blow. After a few minutes, Sri Rama Krishna looked at him kindly and said affectionately, You see, you have certain good signs. I know them by looking at a person's forehead, his eyes, and so on. Tell me now, what kind of person is your wife? Has she spiritual attributes or is she under the power of avidya? And she is all right, but I am afraid she is ignorant. Master, with evident displeasure, and you are a man of knowledge? And had yet to learn the distinction between knowledge and ignorance. Up to this time, his conception had been that one got knowledge from books and schools. Later on, he gave up this false conception. He was taught that to know God is knowledge and not to know him ignorance. When Sri Ramakrishna exclaimed, and you are a man of knowledge, and the ego was again badly shocked. God with and without form, Master. Well, do you believe in God with form or without form? And rather surprised said to himself, how can one believe in God without form when one believes in God with form? And, uh, and if one believes in God without form, how can one believe that God has a form? Can these two contradictory ideas be true at the same time? Can a white liquid like milk be black? And, sir, I like to think of God as formless. Master, very good. It is enough to have faith in either aspect. You believe in God without form. That is quite all right. But never for a moment think that this alone is true and all else false. Remember that God with form is just as true as God without form, but hold fast to your own conviction. The assertion that both are equally true, amazing, and he had never learned this from his books. 
Thus his ego received a third blow. But since it was not yet completely crushed, he came forward to argue with the master a little more. God and the clay image. And, sir, suppose one believes in God with form, certainly he is not the clay image. Master, interrupting. But why clay? It is an image of spirit. And, could not quite understand the significance of this image of spirit. But, sir, he said to the master, one should explain to those who worship the clay image that it is not God and that while worshipping it, they should have God in view and not the clay image. One should not worship clay. God, the only real teacher, master sharply, that is the one hobby of you Calcutta people giving lectures and bringing others to the light. Nobody ever stops to consider how to get the light himself. Who are you to teach others? He who is the Lord of the universe will teach everyone. He alone teaches us who has created this universe who has made the sun and moon, man and beasts, and all other beings, who has provided means for their sustenance, who has given children parents and endowed them with love to bring them up. The Lord has done so many things. Will He not show people the way to worship Him? If they need teaching, then he will be the teacher. He is our inner guide. Suppose there is an error in worshipping the clay image. Doesn't God know that though it he, though through it he alone is being invoked. He will be pleased with that very worship. Why should you get a headache over it? You had better try for knowledge and devotion yourself. This time M felt that he, his ego was completely crushed. He now said to himself, yes, he has spoken the truth. What need is there for me to teach others? Have I known God? Do I really love him? I have not room enough for myself in my bed and I am inviting my friend to share it with me. I know nothing about God, yet I am trying to teach others. What a shame! How foolish I am! This is not mathematics or history or literature that one can teach it to others. No, this is the deep mystery of God. What he says appeals to me. This was and the first argument with the Master and happily his last. Master, you are talking of worshipping the clay image. Even if the image is made of clay, there is need for that sort of worship. God himself has provided different forms of worship. He who is the Lord of the universe has arranged all these forms to shoot different men in different stages of knowledge. The mother cooks different dishes to shoot the stomachs of her different children. Suppose she has five children. If there is a fish to cook, she prepares various dishes from it, pilau, pickled fish, fried fish, and so on to shoot their different tastes and powers of digestion. Do you understand me? Need of holy company and 
meditation in solitude and humbly yes sir how sir may we fix our minds on god master repeat god's name and sing his glories and keep holy company and now and then visit god's devotees and holy man the mind cannot dwell on god if it is immersed day and night in worldliness in worldly duties and responsibilities it is most necessary to go into solitude now and then and think of god to fix the mind on god is very difficult in the beginning unless one practices meditation in solitude when a tree is young it should be fenced all around otherwise it may be destroyed by cattle to meditate you should withdraw within yourself or retire to a secluded corner or to the forest <clears throat> and you should always discriminate between the real and the unreal god alone is real the eternal substance all else is unreal that is impermanent by discriminating thus one should seek of the impermanent objects from the mind god and worldly duties am humbly how ought we to live in the world master do all your duties but keep your mind on god live with all with wife and children father and mother and serve them treat them as if they were very dear to you but know in your heart of hearts that they do not belong to you a maid servant in the house of a rich man performs all the household duties but her thoughts are fixed on her own home in her native village she brings up her master's children as if they were her own <clears throat> she even speaks of them as my rama or my hari but in her own mind she knows very well that they do not belong to her at all the tortoise moves about in the water but can you guess where her thoughts are there on the bank where her eggs are lying do all your duties in the world but keep your mind on god if you enter the world without first cultivating love for god you will be entangled more and more you will be overwhelmed with its danger its grief its sorrows and the more you think of worldly things the more you will be attached to them first rub your hands with oil and then break open the jack fruit otherwise they will be smeared with its sticky milk first secure the oil of divine love and then set your hands to the duties of the world but one must go into solitude to attain this divine love to get butter from milk you must let it set into curd in a secluded spot if it is too much disturbed milk won't turn into curd next you must put aside all other duties sit in a quiet spot and turn the curd only then do you get butter further by meditating on god in solitude the mind acquires knowledge dispassion and devotion but the very same mind goes downward if it develops in the world in the world there is only one thought woman and god the world is water and the mind milk 
if you pour milk in into water they become one you cannot find the pure milk anymore but turn the milk into curd and churn into butter then when that butter is placed in water it will float so practice spiritual discipline in solitude and obtain the butter of knowledge and love even if you keep that butter in the water of the world the two will not mix the butter will float practice of discrimination together with this you must practice discrimination woman and gold is impermanent god is the only eternal substance what does a man get with money food clothes and a dwelling place nothing more you cannot realize god with its help therefore money can never be the goal of life that is the process of discrimination do you understand and yes sir i recently read a sanskrit play called prabodha chandrodaya it deals with the discrimination master yes discrimination about objects consider what is there in money or in a beautiful body discriminate and you will find that even the body of a beautiful woman consists of bones flesh fat and other disagreeable things why should a man give up god and direct his attention to such things why should a man forget god for their sake how to see god and is it possible to see god master yes certainly living in solitude now and then repeating god's name and singing his glories and discriminating between the real and the unreal these are the means to employ to see him longing and yearning and under what conditions does one see god master cry to the lord with an intentionally yearning heart and you will certainly see him people shed a whole jug of tears for wife and children they swim in tears for money but who weeps for god cry to him with a real cry the master saying cry to your mother shama with a real cry o mind and how can she hold herself from you how can shama stay away how can your mother kali hold herself away o mind if you are in earnest bring her on offering o bell bell leaves and hibiscus flowers lay at her feet your offering and with it mingle the fragrant scandal paste of love continuing he said longing is like the rosy dawn after the dawn but comes the sun longing is followed by the vision of god god reveals himself to a devotee who feels drawn to him by the combined force of these three attractions husband's attraction for the chaste wife if one feels drawn to him by the combined force of these three attractions then through it one can attain him the point is to love god even as the mother loves her children the chaste wife her husband and the worldly man his wealth add together these three forces of love these three powers of attraction and give it all to god then you will certainly see him it is necessary to pray to him with a longing heart 
The kitten knows only how to call its mother crying mew mew. It remains satisfied wherever its mother puts it. And the mother cat puts the kitten sometimes in the kitten, sometimes on the floor and sometimes on the bed. When it suffers, it cries only meow meow. That's all it knows. But as soon as the mother hears this cry, wherever she may be, she comes to the kitten. Third visit. It was Sunday afternoon when M came on his third visit to the master. He had been profoundly impressed by his first two visits to this wonderful man. He had been thinking of the master constantly and of the utterly simple way he explained the deep truths of the spiritual life. Never before had he met such a man. Sri Ramakrishna was sitting on the small couch. The room was filled with devotees who had taken advantage of the holy day to come to see the master and had not yet become acquainted with any of them. So he took his seat in a corner. The master smiled as he talked with the devotees. Narendra He addressed his words particularly to a young man of 19 named Narendra Nath who was a college student and frequented the Sadharan Brahmos Maj. His eyes were bright, his words were full of spirit and he had the look of a lover of God. How the spiritually minded should look upon the worldly. And guessed that the conversation was about worldly men who look down on those who aspire to spiritual things. The master was talking about the great number of such people in the world and about how to deal with them. Master to Narendra, how do you feel about it? Worldly people say all kinds of things about the spiritually minded. But look here, when an elephant moves along the street, any number of curds and other small animals may bark and cry after it, but the elephant doesn't even look back at them. If people speak ill of you, what will you think of them? Narendra, I shall think the dogs are barking at me. God in everything, master smiling. Oh no, you must not go that far, my child laughter. <coughs> God dwells in all beings, <laughs> but you may be intimate only with good people. You must keep away from the evil-minded. God is even in the tiger, but you cannot embrace the tiger on that account. Laughter. You may say, why run away from a tiger, which is also a manifestation of God? The answer to that is, those who tell you to run away are also manifestation of God, and why should not you listen to them? Parable of the Elephant God Let me tell you a story. In a forest, there lived a holy man who had many disciples. One day he taught them to see God in all beings and knowing this to bow low before them all. A disciple went to the forest to gather wood for the sacrificial fire. Suddenly he heard an outcry, get out of the way, 
the mad elephant is coming. All but the disciple of the holy man took to their heels. He reasoned that the element was also God in another form. Then why should he run away from it? He stood still, bowed before the animal, and began to sing its praises. The mahout of the elephant was shouting, Run away, run away, but the disciple did not move. The animal seized him with its trunk, cast him to one side, and went on its way. Hurt and bruised, the disciple lay unconscious on the ground. Hearing what had happened, his teacher and his brother disciples came to him and carried him to the hermitage. With the help of some medicine, he soon regained consciousness. Someone asked him, You knew the elephant was coming. Why didn't you leave the place? But he said, Our teacher had said, Our teacher has told us that God himself has taken all these forms of animals as well as man. Therefore, thinking it was only the elephant God that was coming, I did not run away. At this the teacher said, Yes, my child, it is true that the elephant God was coming, but the Mahut God forbid you to stay there. Since all are manifestations of God, why didn't you trust the Mahut's words? You should have heeded the words of the Mahut God laughter. It is said in the scriptures that water is a form of God, but some water is fit to be used for worship, some water for washing the face, and some only for washing plates or dirty linen. This last sort cannot be used for drinking or for a holy purpose. In like manner, God undoubtedly dwells in the hearts of all holy and unholy, righteous and unrighteous. But a man should not have dealings with the unholy, the wicked, the impure, he must not be intimate with them. With some of them he may exchange words, but with others he should not go even that far. He should keep aloof from such people. How to deal with the wicked? A devotee. Sir, if a wicked man is about to do harm, or actually does so, should we keep quiet then? Master, a man living in society should make a show of Thomas to protect himself from evil-minded people, but he should not harm anybody in anticipation of harm likely to be done him. Parable of the Snake Listen to a story some cowherd boys used to tend their cows in a meadow where a terrible poisonous snake lived. Everyone was on the alert for fear of it. One day, a brahmachari was going along the meadow. The boys ran to him and said, Reverend sir, please don't go that way. A venomous snake lives over there. What of it, my good children? said the brahmachari i am not afraid of the snake i know some mantras so saying he continued on his way along the meadow but the cowherd boys being afraid did not accompany him in the meantime the snake moved swiftly towards him with upraised hood as soon as it came near he recited a mantra and the snake lay at his feet like a earthworm. <clears throat> the Brahmachari said, Look here, why do you go about doing harm? Come, I will give you a holy word. By repeating it, you will learn to love God. 
ultimately you will realize him and so get rid of your violent nature saying this he taught the snake a holy word and initiated him into a spiritual life the snake bowed before the teacher and said revered sir how shall i practice spiritual discipline repeat that sacred word said the teacher and do not harm to anybody as he was about to depart the brahmachari said i shall see you again some days passed and the cowherd boys noticed that the snake would not bite they threw stones at it still it showed no anger it behaved as if it were an earthworm one day one of the boys came close to it caught it by the tail and whirling it round and round dashed it again and again on the ground and threw it away the snake vomited blood and became unconscious it was stunned it could not move so thinking it dead the boys went their way late at night the snake regained consciousness slowly and with great difficulty it dragged itself into its hole its bones were broken and it could scarcely move many days passed the snake became a mere skeleton covered with a skin now and then at night it would come out in search of food for fear of the boys it would not leave its hole during the daytime since receiving the sacred word from the teacher it had given up doing harm to others it maintained its life on dirt leaves or the fruit that dropped from the trees about a year later the brahmachari came that way again and asked after the snake the cowherd boys told him that it was dead but he could not believe them he knew that the snake would not die before attaining the fruit of the holy word with which it had been initiated he found his way to the place and searching here and there called it by the name he had given it hearing the teacher's voice it came out of its hole and bowed before him with great reverence how are you asked the brahmachari i am well sir replied the snake but the teacher asked why are you so thin the snake replied revered sir you ordered me not to harm anybody so i have been living only on leaves and fruit perhaps that has made me thinner the snake had developed the quality of sattva it could not be angry with anyone it had totally forgotten that the cowherd boys had almost killed it the brahmachari said it can't be mere want of god it it cannot be mere want of food that has reduced you to this state there must be some other reason think a little then the snake remembered that the boys had dashed it again against the ground it said yes revered sir now i remember the boys one day dashed me violently against the ground they are ignorant after all they did not realize what a great change had come over my mind how could they know i would not bite or harm anyone the brahmachari exclaimed what a shame you are such a fool you don't know how to protect yourself i asked you not to bite but i did not for forbid you to hiss why didn't you scare them by hissing so you must hiss at wicked people you must for frighten them lest they should do you harm but never inject your venom into them one must not injure others in this creation of god there is a variety of things men animals trees plants among the animals some are good some are bad there are ferocious animals like the tiger some trees bear fruit sweet as nectar 
and others bear fruit that is poisonous. Likewise, among human beings, there are the good and the wicked, the holy and the unholy. There are some who are devoted to God and others who are attached to the world. Four classes of man. Man may be divided into four classes. Those bound by the fetters of the world, the seekers after liberation, the liberated, and the ever free. Among the ever free, we may count sages like Narda. They live in the world for the good of others to teach man spiritual truth. Those in bondage are sunk in worldliness and forgetful of God. Not even by mistake do they think of God. The seekers after liberation want to free themselves from attachment to the world. Some of them succeed and others do not. The liberated souls such as the sadhus and mahatmas are not entangled in the world in women and gold. Their minds are free from worldliness. Besides, they want meditate on the lotus feet of God. Suppose a net has been cast into a lake to catch fish. Some fish are so clever that they are never caught in the net. They are like the ever free. But most of the fish are entangled in the net. Some of them try to free themselves from it and they are like those who seek liberation. But not all the fish that struggle succeed. A very few do jump out of the net, making a big splash in the water. Then the fishermen shout, look, there goes a big one. But most of the fish caught in the net cannot escape, nor do they make any effort to get out. On the contrary, they burrow, they burrow into the mud with the net in their mouths and lie there quietly thinking, we need not fear anymore. We are quite safe here, but the poor things do not know that the fishermen will drag them out with the net. These are like the man bound to the world. The bound souls are tied to the world by the fetters of man, women and gold. They are bound hand and foot, thinking that women and gold will make them happy and give them security. They do not realize that it will lead them to annihilation. When a man thus bound to the world is about to die, his wife asks, You are about to go, but what have you done for me? Again, such is his attachment to the things of the world that when he sees the lamp burning brightly, he says, Dim the light. Too much oil is being used, and he is on his deathbed. The bound souls never think of God. If they get any leisure, they indulge in idle gossip and foolish talk, or they engage in fruitless work. If you ask one of them the reason, he answers, Oh, I cannot keep still, so I am making a hedge. When time hangs heavy on their hands, they perhaps start playing cards. There was deep silence in the Room. Redeeming power of faith. Redeeming power of faith. A devotee, sir, is there no help then for such a worldly person? Master, certainly there is. From time to time he should live in the company of a holy man and from time to time go into solitude to meditate on God. Furthermore, he should practice discrimination and pray to God, give me faith and devotion. Once a person has faith, he has achieved everything. There is nothing greater than faith. To Kedar, you must have heard about the tremendous power of faith. It is said in the Purana that Rama, who was God himself, the embodiment of absolute Brahma had to build a bridge to cross the sea to Ceylon, but Hanuman
trusting in Rama's name, cleared the sea in one jump and reached the other side. He had no need for a bridge or love. Once a man was about to cross the sea, Bhishna wrote Rama's name on a leaf, tied it in a corner of the man's wearing clothes and said to him, Don't be afraid, have faith and walk on the water. But look here, the moment you lose faith, you will be drowned. The man was walking easily on the water. Suddenly he had an intense desire to see what was tied in his cloth. He opened it and found only a leaf with the name of Rama written on it. What is this, he thought. Just the name of Rama. As soon as doubt entered his mind, he sank under the water. If a man has faith in God, even if he has committed the most heinous sins, such as killing a cow, a Brahmin or a woman, he will certainly be saved through his faith. Let him only say to God, O oh Lord, I will not repeat such an action and he need not be afraid of everything, anything. When he had this, the master said, when he had said this, the master saying, if only I can pass away repeating Durga's name, how canst thou then, O blessed one, withhold from me deliverance, wretched thought, wretched though I may be, I may have stolen a drink of wine, or killed a child unborn, or slain a woman or a cow, or even caused a Brahmin's death, but though it all be true, nothing of this can make me feel the least uneasiness, for through the power of the sweet name, my wretched soul may still aspire even to Brahmahood. Parable of the Huma Bird Pointing to Narendra, the master said, You all see this boy, he behaves that way here. A naughty boy seems very gentle when his father, when with his father, but he is quite another person when he plays in the Chandni. Narendra and people of his type belong to the class of the ever free. They are never entangled in the world. When they grow a little older, they feel the awakening of inner consciousness and go directly towards God. They came to the world only to teach others. They never care for anything of the world. They are never attached to women and gold. The Vedas speak of the Homa bird. It lives high up in the sky and there it lays its eggs. As soon as the egg is laid, it begins to fall. But it is so high up that it continues to fall for many days. As it falls, it hatches and the chick falls. As the chick falls, its eyes open, it grows wings. As soon as its eyes open, it realizes that it is falling and will be dashed to pieces on touching the earth. Then it at once shoots up toward the mother bird high in the sky. At this point, Narendra left the room. Kedar, Pran Krishna, M and many others remained. So, Master praises Narendra. Master, you see Narendra excels in singing, playing on instruments, study and everything. The other day he had a discussion with Kedar and tore his arguments to shreds or love. To M, is there any book in English on reasoning? M, yes sir, there is. It is called logic. Master, tell me what it says. M, was a little embarrassed. He said, one part of the book deals with the deduction from the journal to the particular. For example, all men are mortal. Scholars are men. 
Therefore, scholars are mortal. Another part deals with the method of reasoning from the particular to the journal. For example, this crow is black, that crow is black. The crows we see everywhere are black. Therefore, all crows are black. But there may be a fallacy in a conclusion arrived at in this way. For on inquiry, one may find a white crow in some country. There is another illustration. If there is rain, there is or has been a cloud. Therefore, rain comes from a cloud. Still another example. This man has 32 teeth. That man has 32 teeth. All the men we see have 32 teeth. Therefore, men have 32 teeth. English logic deals with such inductions and deductions. Sri Ramakrishna barely heard these words while listening. He became absent-minded, so the conversation did not proceed far. When the meeting broken up, the devotees sauntered in the temple garden and went in the direction of the Panchavati. Panchavati, it was about five o'clock in the afternoon. After a while, he returned to the master's room. There on the small north veranda, he witnessed an amazing, amazing sight. Sri Ramakrishna was standing still, surrounded by a few devotees, and Narendra was singing, M had never heard anyone except the master sing so sweetly. When he looked at Sri Ramakrishna, he was struck with wonder. For the master stood motionless with eyes transfixed. He seemed not even to breathe. A devotee told M that the master was in Samadhi. M had never before seen or heard of such a thing. Silent with wonder, he thought, is it possible for a man to be so oblivious of the outer world in the consciousness of God, how deep his faith and devotion must be to bring about such a state. Narendra was singing, Meditate, O oh my mind, on the Lord Hari, the stainless one, pure spirit, through and through. How peerless is the light that in him shines, how soul vivish Bewitching is his wondrous form, how dear is he to all his devotees. Ever more beauteous in fresh blooming glow, that sends the splendor of a million moons, like lightning gleams the glory of his form, raising erect the hair every for very joy. The master shuddered when this last line was sung. His hair stood on end and tears of joy streamed down his cheeks. Now and then his lips parted in a smile. Was he seeing the peerless beauty of God that seen the splendor of a million moons? Was this the vision of God, the essence of spirit? How much austerity and discipline, how much faith and devotion must be necessary for such a vision. The song went on, Worship is fit in the lotus of your heart, with mind serene and eyes made radiant, with heavenly love behold that matchless sight. Again that bewitching smile, the body motionless as before, the eyes half shut as if beholding a strange inner vision. The song drew a close Narendra sang the last line, caught in the spell of his love's ecstasy, immerse yourself for evermore, O mind, in him who is pure knowledge and pure bliss. The sight of the Samadhi and the divine bliss he had witnessed left an indelible impression on Anne's mind. He returned home deeply moved. Now and then he could hear with himself the echo of these soul intoxicating lines immerse yourself for evermore o mind in him who is pure knowledge and pure bliss so i conclude the first video on
गॉस्पेल ऑफ श्री राम कृष्ण परमहंसा थैंक यू माय डियर फ्रेंड्स थैंक यू नमस्कार ओम शांति 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 ही